Welcome to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. Health, wellness, exercise, nutrition, and a whole lot more. Got questions? Call us and leave a message at 251-278-EDGE or message us at Personal Edge Fitness on Facebook and Instagram at Team PE on Twitter or PersonalEdgeFitness.com. Hey, welcome to the show. So glad you joined us today talking about youth training. As you've probably heard me say many times, I've been training now for 28 years and seen a lot, but there was a particular time. This has been 2008, seven, eight. Yeah. We had a good summer. Over a few month period, we had 35 clients sign up. Now I'm going somewhere on this because I'm talking about youth training today. But what was interesting about this is these were all adults that all signed up for personal training. But of the 35, 32 had pre-existing conditions. That's going to be an injury. Typically a joint that's affected, it can be scoliosis, it can be a lot of things, but usually we see um, joint injuries. You know, the number one that we see is rotator cuff and then probably knee injury or back injury is shortly thereafter. Of the 35, 32 of them had a pre-existing condition. The reason I remember this is that that's when we started bringing on not just excess physiologists such as myself, but also bringing on people trained in sport medicine and athletic training for the rehab part of it. But what I found interesting about this, I use that particular time period to talk about why we hire rehab people in our facility and they do a lot of the analysis on people coming in with initial problems, even though my excess physiologists can well handle the majority of those problems. We always want to make sure we have a rehab mind, at least look at somebody. And if it's an advanced situation, they'll actually work with them. But what was interesting also about that was besides the fact that that's what made us start hiring athletic trainers was the majority of the injuries which required regularly modified exercises were due to injuries sustained prior to being 18 years old. So we're looking at high school injuries. Oh, that's an old football injury. You hear that quite often. But the other reason, though, is getting hurt in the weight room. That's something that we saw a lot when I was coming up in high school. Unless you were involved in one particular sport, typically, you really didn't get much instruction if there was much instruction at all, you didn't get much instruction in it. Many people were hurting themselves. You can imagine, I'm sure you know this, that the popularity of weight training has grown. They say it's grown over the past decade. My Lord, it's shot up by major leaps and bounds since I was in school. In high school, even college, there are high schools now that have weight rooms that small colleges would kill for. And I went to a Division One school, and there's there are high schools that have weight rooms that we would have killed for at the time. And we had a pretty good weight room. But a new study found, and in doing research on this, I say a new study. There's, there's tons of studies done on, on children and exercise, especially weight training. A new study found, has found that the number of injuries from weight training has increased as well as many people as, of course, the weight training going over the decade. But I was amazed by this. This study found there were 970,000 weight training-related injuries were treated in U.S. hospital emergency departments between 1990 and 2007. I mean, that's not too far, not too far from a million injuries that were weight training related. It had increased nearly 50% during that 18-year period. That's substantial. That's a problem. And data from the study printed in the American Journal of Sport Medicine showed that males, 82% of them, and youths aged 13 to 24 years, 47%, sustained the largest portion of weight training related Injuries. The majority of injuries occurred during the the use of free weights, and that's what's typically what we see, which 90% of the injuries were due to free weights. And the most common were weights dropping on a person, 65%, and injuries to upper, which was 25%, lower trunk was 20%. 970,000 weight training related injuries. Now, I'm not surprised that a parent would ask me, should my child work out? Should my son or daughter be lifting weights? If you wonder why somebody's asking that, well, just Look at that data. That makes perfect sense to me. When you're training, probably the biggest driver, the biggest motivations for anybody asking that question is, is obviously fears of injury in the weight room. They're doing advanced movements. I mean, they aren't doing uh, the Olympic lifts that have been around since the 60s that we've been doing, the early adaptations of functional training, which is Olympic lifting, which is, has always been popular, has gotten a bad rap, and now it's had a surge in popularity now with the high-intensity interval training programs. And those are advanced movements. Those are advanced movements with weight. And you're going into a situation, typically overcrowded PE classes or weight rooms. Careful now, I'm not trying to bash PE coaches. I'm not trying to bash football coaches or or weight training coaches even for that matter at schools, which a lot of schools have them. It's just the sheer number. Trying to work with the sheer number of students they're trying to work with and making sure they're staying safe is difficult. I mean, incorrect instruction and lifting techniques is causing the majority of these problems. It's been causing them that way since, since I was in high school in the 80s. Jeffrey Neppel. 
Dr. Jeffrey Neppel. He's with the Washington University Pediatric Orthopedic Surgeons and Sport Medicine. He's also a sport medicine physician. He was talking about some simple recommendations. Learn strength exercises correctly before adding weight. Perform low weight, high repetition. Take part in programs that mix weightlifting and other activities. And, of course, he had other don'ts. Don't allow children under seven year old to lift weights. Don't force young athletes to lift weights that they don't want to. Let children strength train if they can. Don't let them do it if they can't understand the rules or whatever. So there's information out there as far as recommendations on this. He says if young athletes are doing these exercises the right way, they get the most benefits, of course, but they also avoid energy and build habits for lifelong health and fitness. Now, now the big part of this now is by doing exercises the wrong way, As I talked about in the podcast on high-intensity interval training, I talked about the fact that Olympic lifting had gotten a bad rap. We fought this, and I say we because I was actually uh, caught the tail end of this when I started doing personal training. We fought the idea of Olympic lifting is bad. Why? People started doing it in the 60s. People started copying those individuals that invented it. They didn't know how to do it correctly. So they figured if you're doing a little bit of something and then doing more of it must be better. And so they were doing, started doing these exercises wrong. Therefore, they got hurt. Multitudes of them end up in an orthopedics office. The orthopedics were asking them, what are you doing that's hurting you? And they said, well, we're doing Olympic lifting. And so their answer became, don't do Olympic lifting, which meant that Olympic lifting is bad. It's something we fought. It, it went on for, for decades. It went on. Throughout the 90s, not until really the 2000s did it become okay again. We're running into the same thing. You've got 970,000 injuries. I mean, we're running into the same problem with youth training. And so we want to get to what should we be doing? What is right? But this is something that's been a passion of ours at Personal Edge, and we have a director of that program. It's Joshua Gooch. Give you a little bit of about Josh's background. Josh has got a bachelor's degree in kinesiology from the University of South Alabama. I, I love the fact that I tripped on that word. I must say that word. What, what, <laughs> 20 or 30 times a day, Josh? Yep. I just had somebody in my office recently that was signing up, and you know, one of the degrees that we accept here at Personal Edge are uh, the five degrees are exercise science, exercise physiology, kinesiology, which I say all the time, sport medicine, athletic training, and here I am, flubbing the words. Now, they talk about certifications all, all the time, and, I, and, and it's more important that my staff have a degree than a certification, but certifications are important. And Josh has a USAW level one weightlifting coach certification. And this is where they actually talk about uh, lifting progressions and what have you. So uh, joining us today is Josh. Welcome, Josh. Yeah, thank you so much, Garrett, for having me on. Um, I want to first kind of piggyback off of what you were talking about with, with safety. Again, reassuring the parents that with the adult supervision that you're going to have here at PE, myself included, and uh, many other trainers, you know, the proper equipment, which I know you know we have here. <laughs> Copious um, amounts of, I always yes. tell everybody that the programs aren't located in our equipment. They're located in the imaginations of our trainers. So. That's right. Absolutely. The realistic expectations of the parents, you know, strength training programs for children and adolescents, they're safe and effective. Absolutely. Weightlifting and weight training, believe it or not, you know, they're safer than many other sports, uh, football, basketball, track, to name a few, um, and activities. I mean, the one thing that we do here, you know, you don't think about a lot of times, but the teaching, teaching how to miss a lift, you know, if something's going wrong, which, you know, we're human, it is, is teaching how to push, push the barbell away from you, how to, how to correctly miss a lift well, in no, the Olympic a lifts. No, describe that a little. I know I, I got the idea of what you're talking okay. about there. That, that's, that's extremely important. It's like when we're working with adults and we're talking, working, even with kids in here, we teach them to, when in doubt, drop the weights. Throw yes, the weight. absolutely. Uh, and you're talking about missing lift. You're talking about even in the advanced Olympic lifting? Or yes, yes, advanced lifting. Li- we're talking about, you know, uh, snatches, cleans, jerks, the like. When you're doing a lift, not only dropping the barbell, but moving away from the barbell, getting away from it as quickly as you can, pushing it away from you, moving in that opposite direction to diminish the risk, to diminish uh, the injury. I coached gymnastics for 20 years. Mm-hmm. And what I would tell parents about, you know, hey, I'm thinking about getting my kid involved in gymnastics. Yes. So one of the greatest things that they'll learn is how to fall. Yes. And that, I, yes. I love the way you're, that's the first thing you're starting with. Is yes, that, because, okay, because you are going to fall, you know, like oh, you're saying in gymnastics, or you are going to miss a lift. Yeah. You know, everyone will. Yeah. Is that what you start with pretty early on in pretty the Pretty early or? on. You want to, you definitely want them, you know, because safety is key. You know, not only do they know how to, you know, have to know how to succeed in the lift. They have to know how to miss it. Right. I mean, it's it's crucial for their safety to know that. Because again, 
these these Olympic lifts, Garrett, they're they're highly technical maneuvers and the techniques, you know, it, it makes it almost when talking about being injured, it makes it almost impossible to to lift with heavy weight. You're talking about a lift like a clean, for instance, where you're talk starting us through a talk us through a clean. Yes, you're I'm, starting, I'm act like I know what it is over here, Joshua. <laughs> I'm gonna try to do so. Pablo's got it down. He's over here. Yeah, I can lift. totally sit here and go, huh? Uh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> what? Okay, what? so a power clean, you start with the bar in front of you. You have to teach that that child, that athlete, even the adult, how to pick the bar up from the ground to the knees, moving from the knees to what we call power position, which is basically where they hold the weight almost in their lap, and then to bring that weight up and over their head and to catch it safely. You know, so again, you're talking about a highly technical lift, very different from a bench press, even even a squat. So you have to teach that lift in what we call progressions. We have to teach them in almost four to five steps before they're actually yeah. ready to do the lift. Yeah. We show them the lift first. We want to make sure that they get the big picture. Right. And then we break it down into these steps, these progressions, as I've called them. Talk about the steps, because I've seen you working with clients, both kids and adults. But yes. I've, I've, and I've seen you do the progression, but there's so many times when it seems like <laughs> I don't mean to, to, to knock you, but because you a lot of times you don't have a weight in your hand or maybe you have a, a stick or something, it looks like you're almost doing a dance move. You yeah, know? Absolutely, mean, yes. I'd much rather start with a stick, as you say, an empty barbell before we put weight in their hands. Right. Um, because, again, these are not lifts you want to do maximum weight on, these progressions, I mean. You're, you're not doing a maximal lift. This is a submax effort. This is learning uh, the proper steps for these lifts. Okay, for something like, all right, when you go, you went to, we went to a power clean is what you were talking about right there. What, yes. Was it, okay. Well, then uh, a, a deadlift, how many progression steps are we looking at there? I mean, uh, just for a deadlift, for something like a deadlift. Uh, for a deadlift, we're looking at anywhere from uh, most likely two. You want to get to the knees, almost, you want to visualize for them, it's a leg press to the knees, and then again, a hip thrust to that standing position. Yeah, yeah, I got is, you. Is what we're teaching. And then, Again, always the emphasis is on, you know, the vital importance of a qualified instructor, such as what we have here at PE, um, to limit the risk of injury. Because like I said before, weight training, weight lifting, if done correctly with qualified supervision is, you know, one of the, one of the sports is safer than, you know, many, many other sports, safer than football, basketball, baseball, anything. Right. I know you do a lot of different programs. You do our Lifting 101 program, which I want you to yes. talk about in just a second. Yes. And that's kind of where we are right now. We're talking about Olympic lifting. We're at that level. And the question we get a lot is, can my child do resistance training? Are they old enough? And yes. so at what age would you take somebody and start doing resistance training with them? Mm -hmm. Talk me through that because I know that answer is kind of multifaceted. Yes, absolutely. I, I would tell them, how young were you when you learned you know, another language? How young were you when you played, you know, you did team sports? Um, you know, children, you know, they must be mentally and emotionally mature enough to follow directions. And that occurs when, when they're ready for organized sports is what, I would, is what I would answer to the parents. So when they're old enough to be mentally ready to receive directions is when I would say they're old enough for strength training, for weightlifting. What about physiologically? We're concerned about joint injury, bone development. Yes. What are you looking for there? Because your answer wasn't a number, and I understand that. I mean, you're looking for cognitive ability, be able to understand direction, and be able to walk them through that. So you're going to start kids in your strength class that are that are eight years old. You're going to start them on Olympic lifting. What, wh where are you going with that? Oh, absolutely. Because I've worked with kids as young as eight. I've worked with kids. I've dealt with kids as young as four years old. Now, the younger they are, I like to stress in my youth training program that I have here is that the young athletes that aren't ready to participate in organized sports, the ones that are four years old all the way up to eight years old, as you said earlier, they still need to be encouraged to participate in what we like to call these free play activities. Okay. okay? I like to say it's getting the kids back outside. All right. We're not necessarily putting a weight in their hands, but we're teaching them these, these movements such as, you know, the squat, Okay, right, yeah. these Olympic movements, these yeah. these progressions without using any kind of weight. You're taking them through the same mechanics yes. of an Olympic lift with like a barbell and what have you, but you're yes. basically doing it through through body weight. Absolutely. The squat is one of the basics oh, of Olympic lifting. It's yes. kind of a lot of it kind of begins in the squat. Oh, yeah. So. You're going to learn the squat before you learn uh, the Olympic lifts. 
of course, that's one great example of something you do with body weight. So what else at a younger age? Like I said, Garrett, it's it's getting them back outside. A lot of the parents, they call up here and they say, you know, my kid spends too much time in front of his screen, in front of the television, wow. on the yeah. iPad, on YouTube, whatever. So it's, it's getting these kids back outside. We want to instill in these children a love for fitness and exercise. So when you're asking what types of exercise that, that we do with the kids, we do basically all of them. The one that they're going to do you know, the one that they're going to enjoy. I call them, you know, games, basically. You have to teach these kids how to enjoy exercise and fitness. Um, so what I'll do is uh, I'll take the kids, I'll bring them outside, of course, and do different activities. We call them, you know, obstacles, you know, races, teaching them to having fun, okay, that enjoyment before competition. Because, um, again, I like, to, I like to use, you know, instead of running laps around a field, for instance, I'll say we're going to play a game. It's called Sharks and Minnows. I'm going to have several of the kids run. One kid's chasing them. They're running around the field, and they have no idea they're doing it. Yeah, yeah. You know? I love it. Um, <laughs> I haven't thought of Sharks and Minnows in years. Absolutely, it was amazing. absolutely. So we used to play it underwater, of course, but you're playing on land. I got Absolutely. And, and the thing about the kids is, again, if they're not having fun, they're not going to want to come back. And what yeah. we want to do is we want to teach them this love for fitness, this love for exercise, and get them coming in on a regular basis. And if they love it, the example that I love is uh, one of the kids that I had. He said, I've been to several places, and I don't like any of them. Wow. I don't want to do this. Wow. You know, mom's, mom's making me come in. We see it all the time. And I said, okay. So we took him, and did we exercise? No, we played games. Okay. Took him outside, um, did all kinds of different things. Instead of jumping jacks, as I, I love my examples, uh, we do something that's called starfish, the same thing. Yeah, I guess. You, just, you just name it differently. You know? <laughs> right, right. Actually. At the end of the class, he came and said, you know, I didn't like any of those, but this this place, I love it. Okay. And since then, he keeps reminding me of that, which I love. Yeah, yeah, I'm um, sure. I'm sure so that makes again, your day. So again, stressing, stressing fun you know, stressing these free, you know, these free play activities to the kids so that they enjoy it, that we have that, that foundation. Then as they get older, we can, again, we can put, we can put a weight in their hands. Um, But first and foremost, yeah. That'd be the earliest form of progression then. I mean, like the youth strength, you know, making a game out of it and they're actually doing fitness when they're, when they're doing the game. That, that makes, that makes person. Absolutely. Because as a kid, if they don't enjoy it, they, they're not going to want to do it. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if y'all caught that right there. That was a sip of water, and I think everybody knows. I know you know. I know you know that when you're here in my show, every time I drink, you got to take a drink. It's our personal edge fitness hydration game. I'm at over 100 ounces right now. I hope you're tracking along too, keeping up with your water. If you've heard the water podcast, you know it is the fountain of you. So stay hydrated. I want to ask us about something that I'm proud of that we do. That is lifting 101. I actually ran into this when I was in high school about kids getting thrown into a weight room when they hit a certain grade or hit a certain age. And they're expected to go with some very brief explanation about how to do these lifts. Yes. The lifting 101 classes, as Garrett said, uh, what we do here is we teach them. We start with the three, I think the three basic lifts, I want to call them the squat, the deadlift, and the bench press. And again, above all else, it's instilling a sense of confidence in these these young athletes it's because again as Garrett said they're going to the weight room you know these these freshmen and they're they're being put with seniors I know you already touched on they're being thrown in these large groups right you know so if we can instill them a sense of okay they know what they're doing they know how the lift works then they can go in they can be more confident and they can do these lifts in fact we had two young athletes who went through the lifting 101 class that I taught and when they got to their school, they were in the weight room. I was told that their coach looked at them, didn't know that they had done the Lifting 101 uh, program that we offer, looked at them and said, uh, yeah. hey, everyone in this room, you guys do what these two boys, these these two athletes are doing. Oh, awesome. And just to me, I mean, that's what it's all about. They were younger. They were yes. younger. Yes. Okay. Think about the level of confidence. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they had once they were told that. Now, think about the old way we used to do it. I mean, the old way of building confidence in a weight room was, how much can you lift? Oh, you better go in there and you better lift as heavy as those other guys. Right. Heavier. Right. You're talking about instilling confidence a little bit. Well, actually, the, the competition is a little bit different. And that is, you know, the fact that they're doing it mechanically right. Yes. Okay. Above all else, you know, safety to us is the number one thing we want to get across to 
all these athletes. You need to know how to do it right before we stack on the weight. I'll see it all the time. Young athletes will come in and I'll ask, okay, you know, when I'm uh, diagnosing them, when I'm assessing them, they say, I ask, well, what do, you, what do you squat in school? What are you doing in the weight room? And they'll give me numbers, you know, 135, 225. And I'm like, okay, well, then you should be able to handle a bar, no problem. Put them under a bar and mechanically, it's it's not good. <laughs> they're basically they're basically moving the weight. Possibly, yes, yeah, they're yeah. moving it not not very well. Yeah, absolutely. exactly. Not lifting it. Of course, that's where you're going to get into overuse injuries or even just a, a, a yes. simply a mechanical injury. Now, is this only for athletes? So that you do this? Oh no, 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 no. My passion, as I'm sure Garrett has said, is these kids that aren't necessarily what you would what you would say are athletes. Right? Are these kids that come in? Um, like the young athlete I was talking about, the young uh, boy I was talking about earlier who yeah. came in and said he, he had no desire to do anything with exercise or fitness. He had tried other other avenues and, right. and hated it. Yeah. These kids, that they enjoy, they enjoy other things, and exercise and fitness, you know, is not even on the radar. Wow. Um, even at that young age, and I believe that teaching them at an early age – the love of exercise and fitness that way even if they choose not to do sports of any kind they still know that that exercise and fitness is for me right right that that i can still be a part of this and do this and be healthier and to teach those around me i understand about the love for it Uh, so again instilling you know in to me, improvement in that self-esteem is crucially important, and it, it's often overlooked. But it's it's another benefit of a strength training program. Right. Um, in fact, a young person that I worked with not too long ago came in, didn't even speak English, wow. and came in to me. Uh, worked worked with his interpreter. He came in, and and Garrett, he had this wouldn't even look you in the eye. Was very, very polite, but just just wouldn't look up at you. Wow. Yeah. Um, at first, uh, wanted to, the only way he wanted to come in was because he had seen a, a fitness celebrity online and told his interpreter, I, I want to do that. Oh, wow. You know, <laughs> so he came in, man, didn't, I, that I was didn't his know only what to in fitness. Oh, oh absolutely. He had seen that. He had seen some, what he would refer to as cool tricks, right? You know, and he had wanted to do that. So he came in. I had no idea what I was going to expect. And when he when he got in, of course, he was very, very polite, but would, would look down on the floor, wouldn't look you in the eye, and was able to work with him. And each exercise we did at first, he was very, very uncomfortable, very yeah. skittish, I would yeah. say. Each one we did through the course mm-hmm. of the time that, that he was with me, that first time, you could see he started to look up. His chest rose a little bit and yeah. you could see that confidence by the end of it he was looking at me going you know is that all is that all you want me to do um what a change <laughs> so absolutely now i'm cheating now because i actually know the end of that story but yes the last day he was here the last day he was here he was with a group other young boys um again don't speak any english and as they were pulling up in the in the bus they were on the, as they got off he was the one that young boy, he, he was leading the charge, so to speak. He was leading them to come into his his domain, I would say, <laughs> and uh, go through the workout. At times, Garrett, it felt like we didn't even need the interpreter. I mean, I would I would point to the next exercise we were going to do, myself, Anton, Lee, and Gary, and he would jump up because he knew exactly what he was going to do, and he would pull the other boys aside and, and point to them, direct them, show them – what was going on. He was becoming the trainer. Oh, absolutely. He, he was. Absolutely. He had no need of me. Yeah. No. Um, but by the end of it, he did something incredible before they left. Um, all the other boys were loading up on the bus and, and he turns to the interpreter and holds all the other trainers, holds all of us aside and turns to the interpreter and Garrett, I'm going to let you share what he told all of us. You were there. What did he say, Garrett? Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't know which one of us was going to try to say that because it's hard to hold back emotions. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. When you think about that. He wanted the interpreter to tell us, thank you. Thank you for teaching me what I didn't know that I could do. I was blown away by that. Absolutely. That was all through fitness instruction, which was quite amazing. Yes. If somebody's interested in getting their child involved, either at that young age in the youth strength program yes. or in you know lifting 101, learning how to work out or anything. I mean, the advanced agility programs that we do with your staff of trainers in those programs. Tell them how to get in touch with you. They would get in touch with me via email at josh at personaledgefitness.com.
And also, of course, our website, personalizedfitness.com, and our Facebook page, Personal Edge Fitness. Josh, thank you so much for being thank on the show. Thank you so much, I sure appreciate you joining me. Talking about one of my favorite subjects, you know, it's kind of where the name of the facility came from. I mean, it was PE, which is people typically know as physical education. It became Personal Edge because somebody else gave it that name from PE. That's kind of what we're all about, and that program happens to be near and dear to my heart. I appreciate you joining yes, me. absolutely. Thank you so much. Listen, thank you so much for listening to the podcast today. Share this with your friends. Let them know that what we're talking about here, I want every body to remember to go seek your own level of wellness and as always stay hydrated thanks for listening to the personal edge fitness podcast with garrett williamson subscribe now and be a part of the show by calling 251-278-EDGE or message us on facebook and instagram at personal edge fitness or at team pe on twitter and visit us at personaledgefitness.com